Greetings from Suzhou, China. I'm Yang Xu, a member of the electrical doctor team of SGCC Suzhou Power Supply Company. State Grid Corporation of China is an ex extra and large enterprise with investment, construction, and operation of the power grid as its core business, which serves a population of more than 1.1 billion. In our Suzhou branch, we set up a team named Electrical Doctor, hoping to provide more reliable power supply and to face the challenges of natural disasters through innovation. In recent years, climate change has contributed to the extreme weather and lightning events in different regions around the world. Lightning flashes occur about 10 million times a day, making it to be the first cause of weather-related casualties after floods. Besides, the economic effects of lightning damage to property are large, varied, and widely spread across the society. Traditional lightning protection intends to protect every facility through more lightning protection devices, such as lightning rods. However, as the scale of the grid expands, the number of corresponding devices will increase proportionally, which will cost more money and land resource. How to find a solution to the lightning protection under climate change in a more economical, convenient, reliable, and sustainable way has become a worldwide problem. It is a great honor for us to participate in the Young SDG Innovators Program after 10 months of study and application of the design thinking courses, our team finally skimmed out the innovative solution, dynamic lightning protection. The traditional lightning protection method adopts the idea of blocking, which means for each facility install corresponding lightning protection devices. However, dynamic lightning protection is an active method based on on lightning tracking, loss prediction, and system control, which aims to lead the objects or targets threatened by lightning. For a certain area where the detection device and the online system are installed, preventive measures can be taken in advance to reduce the impact of disasters. The mechanism of the method will be illustrated in the following animation. Here is a map of a regional power grid. Once the sudden thunderstorm approaches transmission line A, the power flow on it will be reduced. And meanwhile, enhance the power flow on the other lines to reduce the risk of the power outage of line A. When the storm passes away, the power system will recover to the original status. More specifically, we will achieve our goals in three steps. Firstly, to replace the extra lightning rods and arrestors by intensive sensors and system. Just one sensor and one online system are required to realize the lightning monitoring and protection of a region sized 10,000 and 1,000 square kilometers, respectively, which will echoes SDG 9. Secondly, to establish the system architecture using the intelligent methods Meanwhile, the renewable energy, such as wind power and photovoltaic, will also be taken full advantage to system regulation, and SDG 7 will be resonated in this step. Thirdly, to promote the dynamic lightning protection technology to contribute to SDG 13, since lightning hazards are universal in various industries. Our solution requires small amounts of hardware and low investment. However, it has strong compatibility, which is suitable for any region and divergent industries through six business models, such as lightning prediction data service and insurance strategy. In summary, the features of our solution are wider, more accurate, and more effective. The monitoring range of a single system can reach 10,000 square kilometers. It can provide an early warning about 15 minutes earlier than the weather forecast in the core area, 
and the accuracy could be improved by 200%. The number of lightning-related accidents can be reduced by more than 80%. Our solution can create huge economic value. Taking Suzhou as an example, with an investment about 0.16 million US dollars, we can avoid the loss of lightning cost power failure of about $4.6 million each year. Our team is also leading the world's first dynamic lightning protection international standard working group. Relevant technologies are acknowledged by many academic organizations, such as the International Lightning Protection Scientific Committee and the American International Inter Lighting Research and Testing Center. The dynamic lightning protection was expected to take the lead of lightning protection around the world in the near future and protect the life and properties of human beings. In the future, we will continue to expand the application scenarios of dynamic lightning protection in various fields, taking transportation as an example. Lightning prediction is used to assist in vehicle intelligent scheduling. Finally, I'd like to say that the history of human society also embraces the history of fighting against natural disasters. We are determined to deal with the challenges brought by climate change to human society through more intelligent approaches. Thank you all for joining us in the session. Questions and comments are sincerely welcomed. Thank you so much. Now I turn it over to our wonderful judges for their comments, feedback, uh, questions. Remember, we have only seven minutes. So, um, Kim, Manza, Nadine, let us know if you have anything to say to the team. Uh, okay, I can go first quickly. Uh, thank you for a brilliant presentation. Very efficient. Uh, I like the communication style. Um, the problem is very clear, uh, the problem description. Um, also, the positive impact uh, you have there is stated on the three uh, SDGs. Uh, and I already commented on the efficient communication. Where I uh, would like to get some more information or perhaps is, which I didn't really catch is, First of all, for me as a non-expert, what is the actual uh, solution? Uh, I got a bit lost. And the second thing is, uh, how, how long ha have you actually come on the implementation? Uh, because you know, are, are you already working concretely on this within your, um, in the, the company uh, with the authorities or is it still, you know, is it still very early days? Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for your kind questions. And uh, I'm also going to say that good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. And uh, I'm a Tong Tong. I'm a one of the team. Uh, at first, I would like to share with you a very interesting Chinese story, which is very important to our solution. And uh, several thousand years ago, there were floods in China. And uh, at first, people built a lot of dams as more as they can. But they, however, it's uh, failed because the river is really long and the floods always can find a way to bypass or to destroy the dams. And finally, a hero named Yu appeared and he find a new solution, which is And after several years' efforts, the, the, the flood on, in China had to be well controlled. So from this interesting story, we can learn that sometimes the blocking maybe is not the best way. And while the leading sometimes will be more available. And uh, therefore, our team present our solution, which named dynamic lighting protection. Uh, I want to say a 
uh, was about this question that, uh, as we show in the presentation, we said we have three steps to uh, complicate this uh, solution. That is to tracking the lightning and then predicting uh, the loss of the lightning strike. And finally, to adjust the uh, structure of the power grid. And at the first step, we uh, invented a, a sensor to uh, tracking the lightning trace. Then we use this data to predict the, uh, as a lightning strike, which, which is uh, uh, did not happen, but uh, maybe uh, may do some loss of the power grid. And then we have to uh, adjust the structure of the power grid. Then we can reduce the loss to the uh, uh, minimum uh, during the lightning storms. Uh, that's what we do. And uh, this system have already been uh, operating in our power grid in Suzhou. And uh, uh, as we as we show that uh, we just have an investment of 0.16 million dollars and we uh, got, uh, uh, we avoid the loss of uh, lightning storms to about, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 300,000 yuan in uh, each year. So that's what we do here. Thank you. All right. Thank you, team. We can have one very little question from Amanda or Nadim or feedback or comment on the presentation. Nadim, go ahead. Thank you, Amanda. Um, if you can all hear me well, um, thank you, uh, Suzu Power Supply Company, for the presentation. Um, I did join a bit late. Apologies for this. Our invite was was uh, for uh, exactly 8:40. But um, my question to you was, if I was to rephrase this um, in a in a in a bit of a theory of change approach, uh, really wanting to understand uh, if you know your project um, success implemented in five years from now. Uh, what is the? Can you give me a projection of you know what is the impact uh, that 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 you would have in place? Can you just describe this for me as as if it's a headline approach uh, um, with with a reference to that specific to the specific SDGs that you mentioned? Uh, thank you for your kind question, and uh, I uh, I would like to ask the from uh, three uh, three parts. And at first, uh, we uh, we uh, echo the goal nine, and which is uh, we just want to uh, we what what uh, what we are going to invest is just one sensor and uh, one online system, and uh, such a sensor maybe we could build a network, but if uh, in some areas not very big, we just uh, config the minimum configuration is just one sensor, and uh, it's not a very a uh, high price for uh, for relativity for a uh, city. So when we uh, use such uh, um, uh, systems, we can minimize our investment. And the second thing is to uh, use the intelligent control mode to do something which is unconventional with the traditional ways. Because in the, just as I said in the point point, we have to install a lot of devices to protect light lighting. But as you, uh, as a story has told that, we have too much targets and we have too much devices to protect. And uh, even if the lighting is a very low possibility, but because of the big number of our devices or buildings or targets, the low possibility is a very, still very huge number when the lighting comes and uh, uh, produce some uh, harmful uh, effect. And uh, the second thing is we want to avoid so much a big investment and we use the uh, uh, automatic and uh, electronic or some uh, more online uh, carry out measures so that we can avoid the traditional way and we will arrive the same effect which such as adjust the power flows, adjust the vehicle flows or adjust our uh, production screen and uh, 
it's the first uh, the first two steps and the last one is uh, i think our uh, our goal is uh, very a uh, very clear to match the uh, our sdg goals and uh, thanks to the thanks to such a program because at first we are uh, designed such a system for the power grid only but now we can expand our technology to all the uh, even almost all every another industry which is threatened by lightning so we can use the uh, at the insurance uh, as a manufacturers and uh, use insure uh, such as uh, transportation communication because every industry is influenced by lightning due to the global warming there is a data which is uh, when we one degree increased, maybe 10%, all, all about about 10% lightning will be uh, increased. And it's a, it's a very uh, authority report by the International Conference on Lightning Protection, which is the biggest one on lightning research community. Thank, and, thank uh, you so thank much you. for your answer. Thank you so much. Time is up. And indeed, this program is essential to expanding mindsets and applying the theory of change in relation to the SDGs. Um, into our core business and coming up with innovative solutions. Thank you so much, team.